All right, it's now time to get into the good stuff. Factoring with trinomials. This is where most students probably have the most difficulty. And if I was going to concede, I could probably just make a video on as many different of these examples as possible and just say practice, do a hundred of these and you'll be better at it. And that is true. If you do more practice, then you're gonna get better at things. However, the reason why I curated this course the way it was is because I want you to be able to understand things. I want you to have a reasoning behind what you're doing because the reality is when you go to summer break, when you you know, go ahead and take a break from factoring, you take another course and then you come back to another course that it has factoring, you need to remember what you're doing, why you're doing it. And otherwise you're just gonna forget. And all that time you spent practicing 100 practice problems goes away. Right? You have no reason to relate to it. So that's why I spent a lot of the time to get up to this point, and I'm not even done yet. I'm actually even gonna do one more kind of visualization understanding of factoring, right? When we have the area, factoring is the idea of understanding what are the side lengths for that rectangle. So for this example, we're just gonna focus on each rectangle at a time. So if I wanna say x squared, well, what two sides would create an x squared? Well, that could be an x times an x. What about a 3x? Well, if I already have x is gonna be representing the height, then x times what is a 3x? That'll be a positive three. Over here, I have a width of x. What times x would give me a 2x? That's gonna be a positive two. And then we notice that two times three has to equal six, which in case it does. Now, that is the factored form of this. Now, technically, notice I can combine these two terms, right? So if I was gonna combine these two terms, I would have an x squared plus a 5x plus a six right? Because that's what happened when 5x. And so the factored form of x squared plus 5x plus 6 is going to be a x plus 3 times an x plus 2. But lucky for you, I broke down 5x into 3x and 2x, and that's what worked. But what if you don't know how to break it down? Well, that's what we're going to do in the next video. So what we need to do is we need to focus on our last term. This is the big one. This is what we call our c. And remember, the last term is being multiplied by two other constants. So we need to figure out, well, what numbers are gonna work to multiply by six? Forget about the negative for a second, let's just focus on the six. So six can be broken down into six times one and a three times two. That's it, we only got two options. Now, notice it's negative, and what negative means is that one of these factors has to be negative, right? Can't do a negative times a negative, that's gonna be a positive. Positive times positive never makes a negative. So that means one of these numbers is gonna be a negative. Now, when we're talking about the middle term, what we're talking about is doing this operation. I think it's important that you can do enough practice so you can do this operation in your head, but sometimes it just doesn't work like that. I get it, especially when you're first starting out, it's sometimes hard to do. What I want you to be able to see is we're gonna try to combine these factors, one of them being negative, to give me a positive x. So since we have a limited amount of factors, why don't we just write out all the possibilities so therefore you can select which one's correct, but the more practice you do get at this, the easier it does become to identify which would be the correct one in your head. Okay, so now what I did is I broke down my factors with one being positive and one being negative. Now, again, remember, we're trying to combine these. So we're gonna be now replacing this multiplication, because please agree with me that all of these multiply to give me a negative six, right? Because that's what we're looking for. We're not really looking for the six, we're looking for the negative six. However, what I'm gonna do is now to search for my middle term, I need to now combine these to go ahead and get a positive x. Now, technically, since one of them is negative, you're kind of finding the difference, but all right, well, we can just look about this as the addition from on there. I'll get to my tip later. So. Which of these add up to give me a positive x? And if you're seeing this one, then hey, you are correct. So what I'm gonna do in this example is I'm going to break this down one more step just so we can kind of see a factoring technique from here. So therefore you can kind of see how this works. This will be helpful for the next video, but I wouldn't recommend doing this for all of your factoring techniques. So just remember, these are gonna be the terms that can combine here, right? This is technically a three x and a negative two x because that's how we got to that x. So rather than writing them inside a box, which I could do, right? These would just be the numbers of my coefficients for that box, right? That's what, how we get that middle term. Because remember, these two numbers give us that middle term, right? When we combine them in the area, that's how we get down to an x. Now what we can do here is we can factor out our common terms, factor out to the GCF. In this case, you can see the only thing they have in common is an x, so therefore it's an x plus three. And then over here, you can see the only thing they have in common is going to be a negative two. And that's gonna leave me with an x plus three. Now we factor out the GCF one more time. 
No, notice they both share an x plus three. So factor out the x plus three, and you have an x plus three times an x minus two. Now you might say, Mr. McLogan, that was a lot of work because doesn't the three here translate to the three here and the negative two here translate to the negative two here? Yes, you caught me, right? I'm doing a little bit extra because this is gonna be important for the next lesson. But in reality, guys, we wanna do things easy, we wanna do things fast. So once you take your factors that multiply to give you your C and you identify which of those factors add or combine to give you your middle term, you can use those numbers into your final answer for factor. Okay, but I wanted you to see this. A lot of students have questions with this. They get confused with this. So hopefully doing it on a little bit of an easier process will be helpful for you when you see it again in the next video. All right, let's do the next one. Now, I am one that kind of likes to do things in my head, but a lot of times that can get me in trouble. But there's one time that I think it's important for you to recognize, and that is gonna be when you have what we call special products. And one thing I always want you to look for is when you have a coefficient of one or really any square number and your last term is also a square number, what you're gonna wanna do is look for a perfect square trinomial. Now the cool thing about perfect square trinomials is rather than getting broke, rather than getting factored to a factor times a factor, these get factored to one factor multiplying by itself or one factor being squared. So let's go and take a look at four and just kind of see if this works. So four, I could do four times four times one and two times two, right? I don't wanna use that letter. Now, then we're trying to see, well, what two numbers multiplied give me a negative four? So obviously, if it's negative, if this term's negative but that one's positive, that means all of these have to both be negative, right? Because a negative times a negative is still a positive. A positive times a positive is a positive, but when I need to combine them, right, when I need to do this operation and that term is negative, that means they both need to be negative. So obviously you can see negative four plus negative one is a negative five, so this is my only answer. Notice how these two numbers are exactly the same, negative two and negative two. Now going through my understanding of going here to here, I can rewrite this as an x minus two times an x minus two, but in mathematics, we prefer to rewrite that as an x minus two quantity squared, right? So that is gonna be your simplified version. Always look for when you have your last term is squared and your first term is squared, always think of factors that would be exactly the same that would work. I always like to start with that first. And I always like to start with that too when we have something that has a factor term, but we're not dealing with trinomials. In this case, we have a binomial and we don't have anything in common, right? We have an x squared minus 49, so I can't factor out the GCF here. But one thing I can do is recognize that I have a square number. And again, my coefficient over here is also a square number. So rather than doing the looking for a perfect square trinomial, what I wanna do is look for the difference of two squares. And again, what's really happening here is I'm lost my middle terms. That means my middle terms add to zero. That means one has to be positive, one has to be negative. So what two numbers would add to give me a zero? Well, that's gonna be two numbers that are exactly the same. One positive, one negative. So what two numbers that are exactly the same give me a negative 49? Hopefully you got this. This is a negative seven and positive seven. So doing this stuff in my head, I can now get a x minus seven times an x plus seven. And voila, we got the difference of two squares. Last example. Whoa, 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 you're only gonna do one example? Or where, where did this two come from? How does this impact it? Does it impact it? Can I just do what two numbers multiply, give me eight, add to give me negative 10? Nope, can't do that. The process I'm talking about working here is only gonna work when my a, the coefficient of my x squared, is equal to one. So there is a way to factor it when we have a two, a three, a four, anything out in front. But we're gonna get to that to the next video. What I want you to be able to see here is what happens with students all the time. They know that when a is not equal to one, the factoring process is a little bit more complicated. It's a little bit more confusing. So when they see that, they just give up. They don't even get a shot. But remember the video I talked about the GCF, factoring out the greatest common factor. Always look to see, is there something all of these terms share that I can divide out first? And you recognize that all of these terms can be divided by two. So guess what? Let's factor out the two. That's gonna be leaving with an x squared minus a five x plus a four. All right, we're back to four again. Now again, this is a positive four, so I have positive four and I have a negative five. Remember we talked about this right up here. So we have that negative four. Remember negative four plus four gives me a negative four. Negative four plus negative one gives me a negative five. So those are gonna be my two factors. Just making this a lot easier. Look at, look at how easy I'm making this for you and for me. I don't have to make up or come up with new problems. But now you guys can see I have a factored form. It's gonna be two terms or two expressions, and then multiplied by a scalar. But I think we all know what time it is. It's time now to learn how to factor when there is a two and it cannot be factored out. That is all gonna come up in the next video.